In this video, we're going to look at enzyme induction. Now, we should be able to describe these stages and structures involved in the Jacob Medod hypothesis. We're going to look at uh, beta galactosidase enzyme here. So, the first thing we're going to start looking at is something called an operon. Now, an operon is made up of structural genes, okay, which contain the DNA code for the enzyme that is needed. It also contains the operator and contains um, a regulator gene um, that basically produces a repressor molecule. If we look at the diagram down the bottom, we can see we have a regulatory gene to the left. We have the uh, operator here, which is part of the control region, and we have the structural genes. Now the structural genes, as we said before, contain the code for the enzyme that is needed. For example, beta-galactosidase to break down lactose. Okay, so let's look at beta-galactosidase uh, and the lac operon. So first of all, transcription and translation takes place and uh, the uh, genes code will make a repressor protein. So here we have the regulator, uh, regulator gene, uh, the operator gene, and then the structural gene that codes for the beta galactosidase. So first of all, we're going to have the regulator gene which is being produced or trans, um, transcribed and translated. Okay, so we now have the repressor protein. The repressor protein itself will bind to the operator. Okay. So in this case, we're not actually going to get transcription and translation of beta-galactosidase because lactose is not present. Okay, this is a way that the E. coli uh, helps to conserve its energy so that it doesn't have to break down lactose if there's none present. So in this case, the gene is switched off. Okay, so no beta-galactosidase produced. Now, one important thing to point out is that RNA polymerase will not read the structural genes, okay, that will code for uh, or produce the beta-galactosidase enzyme. Now, the reasoning is because we have the repressor molecule, which is stuck here, okay? It means that the RNA polymerase cannot read the rest of the molecule. Now, the RNA polymerase enzyme is what copies the DNA molecule and converts it into an RNA molecule for transcription. Okay, let's see what happens if we have lactose present. So, again, first of all, transcription and translation will take place and the repressor protein is made. We now have lactose, which is an inducer. Okay, this will enter the cell, which is in the nucleus. So the lactose combines with the repressor itself, okay, as we can see here. At the moment, because the operator is free and the repressor has not bound to the operator, the RNA polymerase can actually read the whole entire strand. So it means that the structural gene is turned on in this case, and beta-galactosidase will be produced, and it will break down the lactose that is present in the cell. So when there is no more lactose left, the repressor itself will become free from the lactose, and then will rebind to the operator so that transcription and translation of beta-galactosidase cannot take place. Again, saving energy. Okay, so here's another uh, example uh, just to show us what's happening here. And we call this the lac operon. Now, the lac operon is for the uh, lactose and the beta-galactosidase uh, enzyme. So we have the promoter site here. We can see that because the repressor is bound in this case, where we have no lactose, the RNA polymerase 
can't read the whole strand. Okay, therefore, the beta-galactosidase is not produced. If we have the inducer of lactose, it then binds to the inducer, which then cannot bind to the repressor. Sorry, um, the repressor cannot bind to the uh, operator, which means that the overall beta-galactosidase can be produced. Okay, and that does us for this video.